I want to do a quick review of the buttonhole attachments that I was able to use with my uh, brother 1500. Um, you need to check with your uh, warranty to make sure that you can use these attachments with your machine. But uh, my favorite ones are the vintage machines, and I'll show those in just a second. But you can get one like this on eBay or Amazon. It's not that expensive. This one was made in Taiwan, and um, this is the model number, if I can get it in the camera. And it came with um, the feed dog plate that you don't need with the Brother machine or any machine that can drop the feed dogs. Um, because you, you want to cover the feed dogs if you're not able to do that with your machine. And it also came with this little adapter in case your needle clamp screw doesn't stick out far enough for this little arm to ride on. This is what drives the attachment. It has to sit on top of that uh, little needle clamp bar. So they give you one that you can change out on your machine. Um, and I probably wouldn't have bought it if my machine, I, I didn't want to mess with my needle clamp. And I'm also using the larger screw to attach to my machine. So um, this one works pretty well and I'll show you all of the settings on it. Uh, again, my favorite are, are the vintage machines. But on this one, you can change the length from short to long and I'll show you my samples. Um, and that determines the size of the buttonhole that'll fit your button. This knob in the back is to adjust the width between the legs of the um, buttonhole. And it's, it says cutting width on, or cutting, um, cutting space. And this one, I can't read, it says because the thing is in the way. But what this one does is it, um, I think you call it the bite. It adjusts the bite from narrow to wide. And the fourth setting is this little black screw here, and that will adjust how dense the stitch is, meaning how close, like on a, a just another machine, you would call it the stitch length. In their instructions, they're a little confusing because they use the word width when it should be length. So I'm going to call this the stitch length adjuster. So if you have a looser or longer stitch, you're going to have a more open zigzag. And if you tighten it, you're going to have more of a satin stitch look on it. And so my examples for, for that attachment the longest that I was able to get is a 7 8 inch opening. The middle setting is about 5 8 and the smallest is 3 8 and you can go anywhere in between. You can adjust that knob. So, uh, and you're only going to get this square looking buttonhole. And also, um, like I said, the density of the stitch. On this one, I like to um, go a little bit less dense and then go over it twice if I want to make it a little bit more dense. I don't like to start out too dense because it can get kind of um, puckery. All right, let's go on to the vintage attachments. Okay, there's so many different looks to these uh, that you can find on eBay and I have some others that say that they are for a uh, zigzag machine and they're a fancier plastic look and um, but the the main part of these is how they attach to the machine and I'm gonna try to open these out to where you can see each one I don't know if I can do it let me just hold them this one is for a slant shank and as far as I know Singer is the only company that had the slant shank and you can see um, the bottom of the um, uh, unit will sit on your machine, but this, where the shaft, the needle shaft goes in, or the uh, presser bar shaft goes in there, it goes in at an angle. So if you're looking at these on eBay, 
make sure the seller will give you a good picture of this because most of the time they don't know whether it's a, a high shank or a low shank. They'll um, sometimes they'll list the model number and you can go on um, I think it's Ismax and you can see what every model of the button holder for the Singer brand they'll tell you which machine it goes to and um, you can see this is kind of at an angle too so that's a, a clue that that's for the slant needle and that will not work on the Brother 1500 and this one is for a low shank and I use this one with my featherweight machine and obviously you can tell it's it's very low I think that the high shank are usually about an inch the mounting hole is usually about an inch I'm not sure the exact measurements but you can pretty well look at a picture of this and see that that's that is a low shank. And that also will not work with the, the uh, Brother 1500 without some sort of a high to low shank adapter. And I don't have an adapter, so I, I can't speak to that. So this one is a Greist, and there is a list of Greist models. And I believe that the Greist company made all of these that um, other companies put their names on because they're they're pretty much the same. Um, the thing that makes them different is uh, maybe the knob might be different or the little doodad on the side. But again, this is the key part of wh whether it's going to work with your machine or not. Now this one is a high shank. And let me hold the low shank together with it so you can see. It's pretty obvious. And also the channel that the bar goes in is straight. When I got this one on eBay, I think I paid seven or eight dollars for it, the seller did not know the model of Christ. I believe there's ten or so different models and um, I found a description of all the different models so I was looking for a model number 10 because that was supposed to be a high shank center needle so the needle on my my brother 1500 is center you know, centrally located it's not to the left and so the model 7 was for high bar um, left needle so when I saw a picture of this I, I just saw that it was it looked like a high shank so I went ahead and bought it but when I put it on my machine the needle was hitting on this right side so anytime you put an attachment on your machine you should manually turn the hand wheel and make sure your needle is not going to hit anywhere because you could just throw your timing off but um, anyway I started studying this and I noticed they had a little spacer uh, in there it's a little metal spacer and I moved that spacer to the right hand side and I was able to get this to be centrally located on my um, on my machine so this was so inexpensive that I thought well if I break it I, you know I, I'll lose my seven dollars but um, I wanted to make it work with my machine so I'm gonna take this one apart and show you um, kind of what to remove or what to take off to get this thing moved over before I do that, I want to show my samples that you can do with these templates. And uh, you can still find the templates, but it's best if you buy one of these to try to find one that has the um, templates with it. Now, uh, some of these are extra templates. I believe the 3 8 the half, and there's another one or two that came as an extra accessory to buy. But most of these came with five or six of these these templates and um, this one is one I bought on the featherweight shop and it's an eyelet I have the eyelet but um, for some reason this one stitches out warped and I think because the metal is damaged on the inside so you want to make sure all the little ge gear <laughs> gear teeth are clean and that they're not broken in there because I do have one that I need to throw away because every time I put it on my machine it gets to one spot and it stops stitching and it starts stitching all in one place so make sure these are all in good condition and that all the gunk is all cleaned out of them so there's all kinds of things you can do now on this one um, you just have your 
the wide to the narrow. And this not only adjusts the bite, but it also adjusts um, the, the, um, the distance in the middle of how tight the buttonhole is. For instance, this is the eyelet and that's about a medium setting and then I went all the way to narrow and it kind of skewed it a little bit and then I did um, a wide setting here so it's it's more open and the, the bite is a little bit more same thing with this 5 16th one I did a wide to narrow so all of that is done with this setting right here you cannot change the density of the the stitches on this one I um, I only went around one time and so that would be good if you wanted the stitch to be uh, like for a knit you don't want it too dense so on some of these I went around twice so that's a 3 8 and it goes up quite large I'm not sure what size that one is um, they are all listed on the template itself and like this one has a little circle on one end that tells me that this is a keyhole uh, template and this one is one and one sixteenth I think that might be the longest of any of them so that's pretty good size um, uh, buttonholes and then I have two keyhole templates uh, one's a one and one sixteenth and the other one I believe is a five eighth so uh, that is part of the reason I really love these vintage um, attachments because the buttonholes are consistent and you have a wide range of uh, sizes that you can um, get for them and it'll pretty much fit every button out there. Okay, I want to mention again that I'm not real sure if this is a Model 7. I think it is based on the description of all the Greist models. Um, so if you can't find one that's a high shank center needle uh, for the straight stitch machines, uh, I believe this one will work. So again, get the seller to send you a picture of the, um, the little mount to make sure. So I'm just taking this knob off and then taking this screw out. I already loosened them up. And then you just take the little lid off. So you're also going to need to be able to get to these little, I don't know what you call them, they, they just little pins that push in there to hold everything together. Um, my husband's the one who told me that I should just try hammering them out with a punch. You just get a punch and uh, hammer them out. It's, you know, it's, they're tight in there. They've been in there for a long time. So it does take a little while, but one of the uh, little button head things there is in the way, or this little, um, I think they call this, uh, I can't remember the technical term, but what this little finger does is it holds the fabric down as the needle's coming up so it doesn't pull the fabric up with it. So this is real easy to take off. There's a screw right there. And mine wasn't frozen up or anything. All of the screws were in really good shape. I don't have my good glasses on, so I'm struggling here. Okay, I can see better now. I've got my glasses. Well, I don't know if I'm doing much better. And normally I'd be holding this differently. I'm just trying to stay in the camera. So keep track of all your little screws. And also you don't want to lose this little spring. It's attached to this top arm with a little hook thing. And it's also attached to the little finger itself. So you just lift that out. And don't let the spring fly off. I mean, you can, the spring will probably fall off, but you don't want it flying across the room. So just set that aside, and now these two uh, pins are um, exposed. So I found a place that I could prop this on a, a chunk of wood so I wouldn't damage this. Just figure out where you want to um, set it so you don't hurt anything on the... And I can't remember exactly how I did it, but you get the idea. 
Just find a, a way to rest it so that you can pop those those pins out. So I got a, um, a punch and then I hammered them till they came out the other side. So just make sure that arm is not going to get damaged. So again, I don't remember how I did it, but um, I was successful in getting those out. So once those two pins fall out the other side, then this um, a, uh, attachment um, arm falls out and so does the little spacer. So I just moved the spade, the little metal spacer to the right hand side, stuck everything back in there, and then I hammered these pins back in. And um, I noticed that the, um, the heads of these little nails were kind of fragile and kind of thin, so I used a um, chunk of wood to hammer them back in. They went back in pretty easily but they look like they could be damaged so be careful when you hammer this back in. So you just reverse everything to put it back together and this can be a little fiddly with this thing but um, point the hook downwards put the little spring back on and hang it Hang the other end of the spring on the top hook and then just pull this down back where it was and put the screw back in. And then the rest of the lid and everything is pretty easy to, uh, to get it back in there. Just wanted to show this screw has an extra little collar on there. You want to make sure that that fits back into the hole here and seats all the way in because sometimes it won't fall into that hole and um, go all the way down but you want to make sure it screws all the way down and you may have to um, I know I did just kind of wiggle it till it falls into that hole see it's not wanting to go anymore so I'll just kind of wiggle this little I wish I knew the part, the names of the parts of these so I wouldn't say doodad, but just wiggle the doodad until the screw goes all the way down. And so that's back into place again. So now I'll just put the lid and everything back together. Um, and uh, then this is now modified to work with my center needle uh, brother machine. When you first start setting up the buttonhole attachment on your machine and you just want to learn how to use it, be sure you use two layers of fabric and um, a layer of interfacing in between. Most of the time when you're uh, sewing garments, that's what you're going to do anyway for the buttonholes. If you're going to be doing bar tack on a uh, purse handle or uh, blue jean uh, belt loops or something like that, then um, practice on the number of layers that you plan on using. But you should never just put a, a single layer of fabric in there and try to adjust your tension and everything. It's not going to do a good job. So in my case, I'm just using some cotton muslin and some uh, pretty stable interfacing. I think this is a medium weight, and then I'm just going to fuse that on there. Be sure you check on your warranty on your machine to make sure that it's okay to use these aftermarket attachments. This one here is a vintage Greist and it's not very heavy, but the one that is sold on Amazon is quite heavy. So just be sure that you're, um, you're okay with trying this out on your machine. I've not had any problems with mine, but I'm not making any claims that it won't harm your machine, but I don't, um, I don't foresee that happening. Just be careful and do your research before you try it out. For my machine, when I did my practice, I put a bright red uh, bobbin in there in a different color, like a green or a blue, on the top thread so that I could see how my tension was doing. And I found that it was pulling the bobbin thread to the top more than I wanted it to. So I loosened my top tension to about two so that the top threads would be pulled to the back of the work. And I also, um, let's see if I can find another bobbin case. This is um, just
just a generic bobbin case. You want to um, just barely tighten that screw, the top screw right there. Just just a little t uh, small turn will do it. And you can pull on the thread to kind of test the tension on it. But I uh, tightened my bobbin tension just a little bit so that it would help pull that top thread to the back to make a better satin stitch. And the other thing, I kept the foot pressure on normal, like right there in the middle of the green, because when these things are moving your fabric, they need to be able to grab onto the fabric. Um, the brother machine tells you to, or the manual says to, loosen this foot pressure when you're doing free motion quilting. That's because you're the one putting the pressure and you're the one that's moving the fabric with your hand. But in this case, these attachments are going to be moving the fabric for you. So they need to be able to grab. So just kind of pull on the fabric and make sure after you've put the foot down, make sure that this is able to move the fabric and that it's not going to slip. And I also changed, uh, dropped the feed dogs to this top setting right here with this knob all the way to the left because you want the feed dogs um, down. Um, the, we're going to let the attachment do all of the work. The stitch length makes no difference at all because um, the templates on this vintage one controls um, the density of the stitch and on the other attachment that I'm going to put on the machine. It uh, has different settings that you can use for that. Be sure your bobbin is full before you put the attachment on because once you uh, get the attachment on you won't be able to open this little door and it's going to be kind of hard to reach your fingers all the way up in there to get your bobbin out. You can do it but it's it's pretty difficult and also once the attachment is on the machine you won't be able to use this needle threader because it'll it has a little arm that's sticking out and the needle threader will hit up against it. There's a lot of videos showing how to mount these things to machines and they're all pretty much the same but I just want to show what makes it easier for me. I go ahead and uh, pull this little fork thing the little arm up and then this is what's going to be attaching to the left side of your presser bar. So I like to lower the presser foot bar first because these things are heavy and I find it easier. And I, I don't know if I can get the right angle but this little arm has to uh, at the exact same time that you're lining this up you have to make sure this little fork goes over the um, the little needle bar uh, I don't know what you call it it's the place where you screw your you tighten up your needle when you're mounting a needle in there so I come in at a slight angle and then I get everything lined up and um, pretty much if the attachment is sitting all the way flat on the machine and the needle pre the uh, foot pressure bar is all the way down then um, you should be able to line up the screw pretty easily. And I think my camera's in the way. I won't be able to lean over to see if that is lined up, but I think I've got it. So you don't need this like super tight, but you don't want it wobbly on there. So most of the time I don't even use a screwdriver, but you don't want any gaps up in here. You want it on there pretty straight and pretty flush. For the Grist attachment, I'm going to be using the top. There's uh, some vertical white lines and then there's some horizontal white lines. So I usually make my line longer than this hole on this foot here so that I can take advantage of both the top, the top and the bottom vertical mark. And so generally with these, um, it's going to reach that top line. That's going to be the top mark. So that's the the one I like to uh, line up to. Now I found with this one I need to go a little bit to the left just on, on my attachment. You just have to practice and see where your lines line up. So I have the crosshair on my uh, lines. I have it lined up with the two white horizontal lines at the top and I have the vertical ones lined up with this line but on mine I've put it slightly to the left 
and I've got my width setting on about four, I think, about in the middle. And uh, these were the others that I had practiced with. So all you do is sew, and I, I generally go around twice. Just depends. If you're doing a knit, you probably only need to go around once. was a little bit too far to the right so again you just practice with your markings so if I go around one more time it'll make it the density that I want it to be just use my, my thread cutter so that's a pretty good looking buttonhole so when you practice with your markings just decide where you need to line up your uh, your markings with your attachment. Okay, I've got this one mounted on. It's it's mounted exactly the same as the um, Greist, except for this one. It's not a little fork. It just rests on top of the needle bar. Um, and I've got the density set to about equal to what the um, the Greist is. Now on this one I'm going to be using the bottom markings rather than the top and I found that mine is a little off too uh, on this one so um, let me get this in position. So I'm going to use those little teeth at the back to square everything up with the uh, marking here. So I'm going to put it a little bit to the right and I'm also using these horizontal markings. They're in silver, so they may be a little bit hard to see. They're not white like they are on the, the Greist, but um, I always go a little bit to the right and see if that helps. Again, you need to just practice and see where your lines land. So just trying to get it square and uh, just like any of the others you can start anywhere on your buttonhole as long as you line up that uh, location at the either the bottom of your buttonhole or the top depending on which attachment you're using so I'm gonna go ahead and change the density in the middle of this thing so I'm gonna turn this little black knob uh, clockwise to the right and just do a couple of turns or quarter turns and that's dense uh, a little bit denser you just do slight adjustments and you can see you can make it more dense or like I like to do I just like to go around twice I like to do it loose a loose um, stitch or a short uh, long stitch first and then go around uh, a second time so these do work pretty well with this machine. 